Uh, this presentation is essentially an overview of my PhD. Um, so it's, yeah, it's quite general, fairly light on numbers, which is probably quite good for the end of the day. Um, so just to break down the title a little bit, by whole system, um, I'm basically referring to all the inputs to the cost of energy calc uh, calculations, the so sort of wave to wire in terms of technology and O&M costs. Um, Techno-economic assessment I'll talk about, or has been taught quite a lot. And um, I say marine energy sector, um, I'm just going to talk about the wave energy, uh, wave energy, like everyone else in this, <laughs> in this uh, session. Um, so just quickly, my background, I, I'm a geophysicist originally, but now I'm in the Wind and Marine Energy Systems CDT. Um, at which point I should acknowledge the EPSRC for my funding, uh, and I'm now at the University of Edinburgh, which, as you know. Uh, it's just an outline of this. Um, I'll go through the context for my PhD, which will hopefully provide you with the motivation for the research, and then quickly sort of go over the project aims and a little bit of prior work, which includes some of the reverse LCOE that Adrian talked about, um, and then some future work. I don't know why I'm still doing this when I've watched so many people <laughs> getting it wrong. Um, so yeah, the context is really this uh, structured development approach, which is a term used in engineering quite a lot, um, and essentially refers to taking wave energy from concept development, where it is now, through to um, the first farms and market diffusion. Um, this is sort of an example of structured development is, is the sort of WES stage gates um, that they sort of put calls out at the moment. Um, for instance, their power takeoff call. Um, the sort of stage gating process ensures that uh, technology doesn't move from one stage to the other without first um, proving its viability and, and meeting certain, certain thresholds. Um, the problem Wave Energy Scotland is, has is how to assess um, technology, um, how to measure sort of success and decide what, what are the indicators for uh, commercial viability at this stage, at this early stage of development. Um, why is there this considered approach to development? It's um, what you sort of hear time and time again. It's looking back in the past and, and ensuring we don't fall into the same pitfalls. Um, people always point out sort of Polaris and Aquamarine and they, they say that they sort of went, went too big too fast. Um, there's a common thing that people say, but that's only probably part of the, part of the problem. Um, they sort of moved up to full-scale ocean testing some sort of six or seven years after, after sort of the companies formed. Um, but there's not really an appetite to go any slower. Um, Core Power have a sort of development path that's up to sort of full-scale ocean testing of sort of six years. Uh, the Wave, Wave Energy Scotland, um, also that's a sort of five and a half, six year process of getting into full-scale demonstration. So there's not really, no one's saying that they should go any slower. It's just that um, it should be more structured. And so as I say, the pitfalls should be avoided. Those pitfalls um, that people talk about are sort of the functional requirements being considered too late in the engineering process. Um, so the sort of weakness because of that weakness is not being identified early enough, which is where this techno-economic assessment comes in. Um, and too much design fixation, not enough flexibility in the, in the process or enough feedback, but that balanced also with too little design consensus, so those sort of resources not being focused enough. Um, so just to hammer this point a bit more. Um, Really, it's, it's identifying the sort of functional requirements early on, um, which is something that Wave Energy Scotland has worked on, and it's the it sort of illities that Anna was talking about. Um, that graphic should probably include energy capture, which is quite a big one. Um, and, and then translating the sort of thing that I'm looking at is translating that to uh, sort of engineering parameters that are sort of quantitative and comprehensive and measurable. Um, so looking at how you can assess these, these different illities at the sort of earliest possible stage 
Um, and then that's to help you identify the best, the best designs. So that ties in with sort of the search in the design space, um, which is sort of what Anna, Anna's project is on, um, sort of evaluating alternatives. And as, as she mentioned, that's a, sort of an objective function. So you're like sort of maximizing the, say, the power capture or minimizing the, the cost. Um, but it sort of so that search in the design space also includes things like material selection, which is the way of Energy Scotland call at the moment, looking at novel materials, um, whether you make or buy decisions, so whether you have things off the shelf, um, and also, importantly, the sort of testing and verification process. Um, so my PhD sort of focused on the techno-economic assessment aspect of that, so measuring success and identifying um, uh, sort of good innovation so that it can be harnessed. Um, the challenges of that is, is the sort of wide range of concepts that exist. So often for, for the sort of funding bodies, it's, it's sort of comparing apples with oranges um, because they're so different. So it's looking at something that's sort of trying to find a methodology for that assessment that's uh, sort of device agnostic. Um, what's currently used commonly is the cost of energy, which has been talked about, um, which is your sort of costs over your output. The problems with that is uh, where wave energy is now, the early stages, there's too much uncertainty and assumptions. Um, for example, um, sort of cost estimates for maintenance might rely on, on, say, your mean time to failure. But because in wave energy, there's not really any bench testing or um, accelerated fatigue testing and things like that. Um, so that's pretty much an unknown. Your sort of mean time to failure is unknown, really, till you put something in the water. So the LCOE isn't really a good indicator at the early stages of development. Um, so that leads me to the aim of the project. It's basically what I just said. Um, current indicators are not accurate enough to describe commercial ability. Um, so the aim of the project is to develop a sort of standardised economic um, modelling methodology for assessment, um, which will also help to provide informed guidance on sort of how, how the level of resource that's needed to move along the TRL scale, and importantly, to how to deal with uncertainty. Um, that's quite a big part of it. Uh, for example, um, with the cost of energy, the uncertainty in the calculation might be as good an indicator of a developer's ability to commercialise as the actual value of LCO itself. Um, so a bit of work that's been done so far. Um, so I was working on the reverse cost of energy with the other guys. And uh, Adrian went over that pretty, um, pretty much everything. Uh, I think I just wanted to make a couple of points from these two pictures. So the, f the one picture on the left is, is, is these available expenditure for the, for the PTO uh, for different types of device. And there's a comparison there with how much offshore wind spend on their sort of drivetrain. Um, so it's basically suggesting that the performance of devices isn't good enough at the moment. Um, because based on those, those sort of performances that we found in the literature, um, you don't really have enough to spend on, on your PTO. Um, so that needs to improve um, by how much you're sort of looking at, uh, to meet the sort of offshore wind threshold for the PTO, it's sort of um, capture risk, risk ratios of, of 38%, which is fairly high for some of these devices. Oscillating water columns only really achieve 30, around 30%. Um, and so that sort of makes the point of you need to explore the full design space that maybe these sort of concepts that we have at the moment or the technology that we have at the moment um, isn't good enough, um, which is kind of well known. Um, and then some other work I did just quickly, because uh, it's fairly wordy, is um, comparisons with other sectors. So I was looking at um, how innovation is really identified and harnessed in, in other sectors. So I looked at a few different industries, and then how quickly can we expect widespread diffusion to occur, which is something that a lot of people look at. Um, and just for an example, there's um, 
can look at wind turbine development in Denmark. These two graphs are sort of up, upscaling of, of wind turbines. And there's a sort of 20 plus years of formative, iterative development um, with sort of tens of kilowatt and hundreds of kilowatt um, turbines. Um, and really, that succeeded because there was a perseverance with technology. It didn't, wasn't particularly reliable, but there was, yeah, as I say, perseverance and patience and um, this sort of learning by doing approach. Uh, wave energy doesn't really have that luxury, so we'll have to follow a very different development path to that. Um, so the, I've sort of mentioned the objectives for the future work. So I'm continuing to work on the sort of reverse cost of energy that we did to sort of improve it and break it down further and trying to get sort of more um, technical parameters from that that could be used as sort of the thresholds for techno-economic assessment. Um, yeah, I would like to calculate uncertainty in, in sort of LCOE to define the point in the, in the sort of TRL scale where it becomes an acceptable metric. Um, and alternatively, for those early stages, develop the methodology for techno-economic assessment. And it's all part of this, uh, yeah, exploring the design space to find and assess possible scenarios for wave energy. Okay. Oh, yeah, that was the end. Thank you very much. This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh.